Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back or welcome for the first time to The Electric Vibe. I'm your co-host, Kurt Hoffman, and to my left is... Hey, David Silva, The Electric Man. And uh, who do we have today, Jay? We have a guest who, Kurt, you and I have affectionately dubbed the Mozart of the mashup. Through a clever and talented skill of combining different musical genres into a seamless blend of musical bliss, Bill McClintock is changing how not only how we listen to music, but how we watch music videos. The Electric Vibe is happy to welcome Bill McClintock to the show. Bill, how are you? I'm doing fine. Thank you, guys. Thank you for having me. It's our pleasure. Absolutely. So looking at the stats, Bill, you have about 424,000 subscribers. I'm quite frankly shocked it's not a million or, or more. Uh-huh. But if you look at the total number of videos watched uh, on, your, on your account, 103,136,714 views and counting. And that was probably 715, right? That counts. So I'll yeah. just keep playing your videos and repeat while we're talking. So it just increases the number. Um, you have had, you've actually had people, you know, the artists themselves, you know, give shout outs and retweets to some of your stuff. And, uh, you know, um, I think the first thing that came on my, uh, radar and what brought you on the map was your mashup with a Marvin Gaye, uh, you know, version of I heard through the grapevine and rats round and round in the background. I mean, dude, total, total genius, uh, oh, on your you. part. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, that was the one that put me on the map. So I had, before I did that mashup, I had <clears throat> I had about 50 subscribers. And that was after I had been doing mashups for maybe eight or nine months, somewhere around there. Yeah. And then I did that one. And then it just kind of blew up. And I had an audience at that point and then just kind of fueled the whole thing. And I just started making more and more after that. Let me let me just say, Bill, that, you know, I and I think that what ends up happening, if it happened to me, was... um you know, I was introduced to your channel. I start watching the videos and I see, you know, the uniqueness. I see, you know, how things blend together. And then it just turns into, you know, before you know it, it's three hours. And I've just been looking at videos the whole time. So, you know, I mean, it really is fascinating how you do it. And maybe you can take us through, you know, kind of what what got you started, how you started getting into mashups and 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 kind of, you know, tell us how you how you grew into this. Sure. So um I mean, I was, I've always been a big fan of music from an early age, you know, influenced by my dad, certainly like the music that he would play in the car, a lot of classic rock. We always had like classic rock radio on in the car. So, and most of the stuff that I was listening to was older than me. You know, I was born in 1980. So a lot of it was from the sixties, seventies and some eighties as well. And, um, just really developed a love for that kind of music. Got a little older around 14. I started playing guitar took guitar lessons, ended up going to college for music, uh, majored in music technology, and um, you know didn't know at the time that I was going to be using music technology to do what I'm doing now. Um, but as a guitarist, I, I don't know, I never really did anything that creative. I was never in bands. I never had really any, um, mm-hmm. any aspirations or anything like to, to gig or, and do that kind of thing, be in front of a live audience. But I still wanted to do something creative. I just didn't know what it was going to be. And then, you know, one day on YouTube, I, I kind of discovered some, you know, mashups, different mashup artists who were who were making mashups. And just the whole thing just really fascinated me, how you could take two songs or two iconic songs that you know really well. And if they're compatible musically, you could blend them together. And, you, you know, the result is something that sounds brand new. You know, it's two familiar things at once, but somehow that sounds new. And that just really fascinated me. And I just wanted to figure out how to do that. So I just kind of got in and took what I knew about music technology and was able to find isolated tracks and just kind of taught myself how to do it, I guess, just from experimenting and finding kind of my my niche area, I guess you could say, and you know, kind of did the soul metal thing eventually. But that's that's basically how it started. So being a Duquesne University grad, and you're in some really great company, and just because the two of us, Jay and I, are are huge Prince fans, uh, Eric Leeds, the saxophonist, and Matt Bliston, the trumpet player who played for for Prince for many years, also Duquesne grads. Oh, I I didn't know if you knew that. So you were, yeah, listen, and Werner Herzog, film director, never finished his degree, but he actually went there as well. 
Um, <clears throat> being a Baltimore Ravens fan, I, I, I still have to point out your Stillers over there. Uh, oh, Art yeah. Rooney, Art Rooney, the, the owner of the Pittsburgh Steelers, actually went to Duquesne as well. So uh, oh, nice. Bobby Vinton. Bobby Vinton really? as well. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, looking up all these different grads and stuff like that. Your name needs to be in there, Bill. They didn't have your name in there. and We're going to have to change that. But all right. Um, Sounds good. But but you had this degree, you know, being music, uh, former music educator myself and understanding <clears throat> how to teach, you know, the elements of rhythm, harmony, melody. It, all all that uh you have to have some degree of music theory to be able to understand relative keys the way that you do your mashups you know the relative minor to the relative major and how you're able to make some of these i mean your classic example of that is how you were able to take brenda lee's rocking around the christmas tree and work in acdc's done dirt cheap I, i'm dirty deeds done dirt cheap i just gotta shout that one out because those two should not work together at all. And, and I played it. I played it at work one day. I work at a retail wines. Uh, I work for one of the fine wine and good spirits shops, Bill. You'll understand. Or as we used to call the state stores back in the day. Sure. And I'm playing this in the background. It was, it was, it was July 25th, so Christmas in July. <laughs> and I decided to sneak that one there. People are going, around going what the hell yeah, is listen, going? Too, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah, but you have to sneak that stuff in there. Um, you know, some people are you know, digging it. <coughs> but having said um, that, Bill, you know, I'm sorry, Kurt, if I could just interrupt just for a second. Yeah, please. But to something that Kurt just said, it shouldn't work, but it does work. Yeah. And so can you kind of just take us through the evolution of that mashup? Sure. Yeah. Um, so the ACDC vocal, I tweaked just a little bit to make yes. it so that it's essentially just two notes happening. So you have like, and there's there's really two chords that what from what I can remember that happened during the verse. I think it's just a one chord and a five chord. Yeah. So I have, you know, he's, you know, starts the phrase, mm -hmm. he's singing on the one, just on do, mm -hmm. right? And then goes to the five chord, he's down a half step on T to, you know, work with a five chord and then back up to, to one again. So that's really, and I didn't have yeah. to change much. I didn't have to move the notes around that much for it to fit with the chords and that's i mean that's really what it is as long as theoretically they work to they are in the same key and you could make the you know it, if you have to if you have to change notes do it in a way that's subtle so that it's still going to fit with the chord changes and rhythmically yeah. the phrasing just fit with the rest of the music that's something that's kind of hard to explain it's something that it's, it's more of a feel and you, mm -hmm. you kind of have to I mean, I, I try a lot of different combinations before I find something that is like, okay, this is cool. I could, you know, this, these two, again, they shouldn't work, but they do. So, you know, and that, that's the thing that gets people's attention immediately. Like what, how is this, how, how is this possible that this is happening? And that just, that takes a lot of trial and error. Just a lot of um, trying different combinations. Yeah. Sometimes, I mean, even now, sometimes I'll start working on, on a combo and it's just, it's kind of working, but not as well as I want to. And I just, I have to throw it out and, and start from scratch and try to find something that I like a little better, but that's basically how it, how it starts. What was the easiest mashup you ever did and what has been the hardest one, but, but you finally got it working. <clears throat> I'll have to think on that one. Okay. Um, easiest one. Probably I would think some of the earlier stuff that I did only because yeah. I, I wasn't as detailed. I was, <clears throat> you know, I was still in the beginning stages, just kind of honing my craft, so to speak. Sure. And one that comes to mind is the uh, Black Sabbath in Chicago, which if you <laughs> if you have my videos in order, you would go all the way to the very bottom. It wasn't the first one I, that I did. It was the second one. Mm hmm. Because the first one I did was Steely Dan and Motley Crue, and that was yeah. taken down due to copyright, which right. incidentally I redid later and and put it, it's it's on my channel now. Hopefully it'll stay. But yeah. anyway, um, the Chicago and Black Sabbath, the the verse worked really well, and really mm -hmm. there, for the Sabbath tune there there was no chorus. It was Sweet Leaf, so it's just it's just right. a, you know there's maybe three different verses. And so for each verse, instead of the Chicago vocals, I had I had Ozzy in there 
and it just worked and i just kind of went with it and then when the chorus would come up i would just have the chicago vocals in there yeah. so it was kind of a back and forth yeah so that was pretty easy um hardest one mm -hmm. some of them you know if i were to, to open it up and show you like all the different tracks there's some that just have a few like maybe five tracks and there's some that have a lot like up to 20. in fact mm -hmm. one that i did recently i think that had maybe mm -hmm. 32 tracks <laughs> Well, and the reason it was that so difficult was because all of the tracks were mono. There was nothing, I mean, completely dry. I had to figure out, you know, how to pan everything, ooh. how to EQ everything. And normally I don't have to do that much with it because it's just an instrumental and that's already done. I just had to figure out how to put the vocals over top of it. But it was the um, Pantera and <laughs> Tina Marie one. Oh, that's which, a great one. You know what? <laughs> I love that one. And I was disappointed that it didn't do as well. As square bit square really biz like should not one. work with slayer i'm uh, but but <laughs> damn it again that's a that that one took okay okay yeah now, you know it it just it so you you have the skill set that you easily could produce other people you know have you ever i mean i know people can you know kids these days can <clears throat> put a bunch of stems up on a daw on a digital audio workstation and produce themselves. But you have you ever, ever thought of getting, getting into music production at all? Because my God, I'll be honest. I don't think I could. <laughs> I mean, I may, if I wanted to, maybe I think that I would, I, there's a lot more that I would have to learn to, to really sure. make it sound as, as good as like some of the top producers and, and, and how good their music sounds mm -hmm. once they're, they're done with it, you know, all the engineering and the, the mixing and the mastering and all that. And I, I mean, I did have some of that while I was at Duquesne. Sure. You know, that was so long ago, and I wasn't that focused on that at that time, mm -hmm. um, just to be honest. So I feel like I'd have to learn a lot more. Mm -hmm. But maybe with that knowledge, I I could see myself being able to. But I, I, I feel like, you know, what I'm doing now is it's com it's not as mm – -hmm. I don't know how to say it. Just it it's not as in-depth – as far as the, the sure. mixing and mastering that a that a sound engineer would sure. you know have to do. But I think I could. So I don't know, maybe somewhere down the road. Um, so what way. was your main focus at uh, in sound uh, technology at Duquesne? What were you working on, like being a sound engineer or? So, I mean, it, we had, we did take audio classes. Okay. Like intro to audio and audio one and audio two. I'll be honest, I did not get much out of those. It was not, it was, there was so much theory and not mm. enough hands-on <clears throat> stuff, mm. but the, the mm. stuff that I did, like, I'm, I'm trying to remember the names of the courses, but it was like music sequencing where you would, uh, you would use the, the keyboard as a MIDI controller mm. okay, and uh, record anything you want. I mean, it could be your own song, it could be a cover, but it was learning how to, to use the different sounds that the Okay. You know, the software could produce sure and then sequence everything together so you could have a, a drum track you could have guitar sounds bass sounds keyboard sounds strings any of that kind of stuff and that i was i was much more into i did okay. i enjoyed doing that a lot okay and that's really similar to doing the mashups now and and using the technology in a similar way okay so i studied that and um also performance was kind of like under that umbrella of technology because you from what i remember you could do music technology with sound recording as the main focus or with performance <laughs> and there might have been another mm. one too but mine mine was was on per on guitar performance oh the, wow the <clears throat> I, I was definitely into and actually while at duquesne the, the thing that i was mm. really into was writing arrangements of songs for guitar ensemble especially cool um so that being four or five guitars and bass and drums. And the first one I did, I did it with a friend of mine. We kind of collaborated and <clears throat> did um, play that funky music. Sure. And we just I forget how we did it, but we just kind of broke it down and made it so that four guitars and bass and drums could do that. And I remember doing a couple of Steely Dan songs. And then I did Bohemian Rhapsody. It was on the, just the, the um, suggestion of the guitar professor for that. And he was also my private guitar instructor. <clears throat> And he's like, yeah, we should do Bohemian Rhapsody. And I said, awesome, let's do it. And I stayed up like all night doing it just in, in finale 
on my computer, like putting oh, wow. everything and figuring like how to break it down. And I was just like, so like, I don't know, OCD, like about, to, I don't know. It just appealed to me so much. Like, but you much can score. I never been playing cool. ever did. And again, and that's really <laughs> mm -hmm. similar to, to what I'm doing now. So it's, it's funny because I didn't mm. know, because I loved arranging, but I didn't know what I was going to do with it. Mm. And I took the big band arranging too. So uh, like oh, jazz wow. arranging one and two, oh. I learned how to write charts for like cool. 14 horns and rhythm section. And, and I, I like that too. Like I, I did just one chorus of, um, oh, I can't even remember what jazz tune it was. It's been so long, but it's like the project was to, <laughs> was to create, just uh, an arrangement of one chorus of a jazz standard. And then we would present, like a, we would print out the parts and everything and give it to the jazz ensemble. And then they played it. So it was like, okay, I did this arrangement and now I got like the actual jazz ensemble playing it while I'm conducting oh, or cool. whatever I oh, did. Cool. I was standing up there because I didn't really know what I was doing, but it just sounded so cool. And it's, it's just like, this is amazing, you know, to, to have this thing kind of brought to life. And I, I really got a kick out of that, really enjoyed it. But it just kind of, you know, through the years and I don't know, it just evolved to me doing mashups somehow. <laughs> very, very organically, huh? Yeah, yeah. But you so, but you read music and you write. So sorry, that's an excellent skill set to have. Yeah. Bill, can you take us through development? I mean, so, you know, I, I can, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I'm assuming that, you know, obviously with your skill, you're probably thinking about music all the time. When it comes down to actually doing a mashup, how do you start? You know, is it something that you're thinking about? You're thinking about a certain track, might go with another one. How do you like get the whole process started? It can vary from from one mashup to another. Typically, it's if I have an isolated vocal track, something that I've found, usually on YouTube. Not always. Sometimes I'll I'll do even a Google search for like stems of a certain artist, and I'll be able to find things on different websites that way. Um, but typically it's a vocal track. So I have this isolated vocal track and depending on the style, I want to do something that's opposite, you know, so I have a Slayer vocal. I want to do something with pop music Love it. or I have a, um, you know, <clears throat> Temptations vocal. I want to put that with something metal. Hmm. So that's <clears throat> essentially the starting point. And then where it goes from there is, you know, you have to have the, the music theory. You have to match key and tempo and, and it's, I feel like it's changed throughout the years. When I first started, I hadn't done any yet. So it was anything and everything that I could think of. And then the more that I do, because I've done, I don't know, like 130 or, or so by this yeah. point in time. And I try not to repeat. So if I've already used this vocal, I can't use it again. I got to think of something else that's going to go with this instrumental. Or I've used this instrumental. I, I can't do that. Maybe I can use the vocal of the same song so that I'm I'm not repeating. Um, but yeah, you, and, and one thing that I do now and is kind of a starting point is there's a, a karaoke website that has an advanced search feature where you mm -hmm. can search by key and by tempo and by or by decade if you want, um, genre, any of that stuff. And so if I have a song that's in the key of E minor, 130 beats per minute then i can search those parameters to find a song that you know theoretically would work with it and would fit with it and then at that point it's like okay now i gotta you know get into the music and figure out you know how was the music arranged how long can the vocal phrase be is it mm -hmm. you know one measure two <clears throat> measures where do the accents happen in the music make sure that they're not, you know, stepping on the vocal and that everything kind of has its own place. And that process can be a real pain in the butt. It's just, it can take forever to find a really good combination, but it, it has to be something that just works and you don't have to do much tweaking, if any. I mean, it's nice when it, when everything just kind of lays out and is almost perfect as it is. Now, you, I mean, you always have to do some tweaking, here and there, whether it's a rhythm or a, a pitch or changing the form of the vocal or changing the form of the instrumental, if whatever's going to make it sound like a song, you know, I don't want it to sound like a mashup, like I'm forcing these two things to go together. I want it to just sound like a song and that it could have just existed 
that way in, in a parallel universe or whatever. And, you know, sure. it just it just sounds like it makes sense and it's cool. And it's something that's, that's not, you know, just some, like a one-off thing. Like, oh, okay, yeah, that's cool. Like I heard mm -hmm. that move on. I want it to be something that people will come back to and, mm -hmm. you know, put on a playlist or like play at parties and, and something that they it just, they really love. So, and that just, it takes a while to mm -hmm. get it, to find a combination, first of all, and then to, to manipulate and get it to that point where it's, it just, sounds good enough i guess and I, i'm i'm a total perfectionist mm -hmm. probably that part of that is, you know the, that's part of the reason why I, I don't enjoy performing in front of people because i mean you get one shot to do it you screw it up and that's it <laughs> you're done you can't you know with a working on a computer you could tweak it as many times as you want until you mm -hmm. get it as per, as close to perfect as you can sure. so that's another part that that really appeals to me Great, great. And I think that's one of the things that to, to speak on something you just said, when doing the research for this, and listening to a bunch of the the mashups, none of it sounds forced, it all sounds like it goes together. I'm going to give you, you know, one of my favorite ones was the the Michael Jackson, uh, Billy Jean and Eric Clapton cocaine. I mean, I wouldn't think that way. I wouldn't think right. that they would go together. And it sounds very natural. That's good. That's good to hear. And that was an earlier one. In fact, if, if I remember correctly, I think that was the one I did just before the <laughs> Rat and Marvin Gaye one. Oh, really? Okay. And yeah, it was interesting <clears throat> because you know, keeping track of views hmm. and how many they get, and like you know, the just the curve, like the the Rat and Marvin Gaye was kind of like you know, big spike at the beginning, and then just kind of like leveled off, you know, and was I don't know, it's sitting around like two million hmm. views, something like that mm -hmm. now. And then the the um, the Billy Jean and cocaine was just real steady, real steady, and just kind of mm -hmm. just kept going, going, going. And I think that's I don't know, maybe three million, four million, something like that. Yeah. So it, it eventually passed up the the Rat and Marvin Gaye. So it's and I, I don't know what I don't know why I I, I don't know <laughs> what you know what what contributes to them you know when they get views and you know where people are accessing them, where they're sharing them and, and that kind mm -hmm. of thing. That's like, that's a total mystery. <clears throat> so do you have a personal favorite one of yours that you've done? Like, Oh man, geez, this is, I mean, or a couple of them. I always feel like <clears throat> it's the one I'm working on currently, whatever right. that may be, you know? And it's like, Oh, this is so great. I love this one. But there are times when I, there's certain ones that I just come back to over and over again. Um, One that I could think of just off the top of my head that I, you know, I often say that it's my favorite. It's the one that I did with, um, with Black Sabbath and uh, Herb Alpert, the, the song <laughs> Rise. Yes. Which is the one that I think was sampled by Biggie Smalls, if I'm right, not right, mistaken. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, but that one with War Pigs and Master of Puppets. I did the Metallica Master of Puppets in there. And yeah. I think it's Heaven Sent, that guitar solo by George Lynch. Yeah. yeah, from uh, from Dokken. Mm -hmm. yeah. All of those things together, and I just, I just love that one. I just love how it's got like a, a groove to it, a funk thing, and and that it was interesting because there's no isolated vocal of that Sabbath tune, so I really just kind of had to work in. Well, not even mm -hmm. work in. I just had to take the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So just like the instruments and everything, and, and with mm -hmm. the vocals of the Sabbath tune, and just lay it over the Herb Alper tune and it worked just because I mean, the vocals are pretty bare, but there's like those hits that da -da, that happens every, every two measures or whatever it is in the Sabbath tune. And it just, it sat really nicely with, with the Herb Alpert song. And I was, so you like, didn't have to do I too much tweaking. To a lot. Yeah, cool. exactly. It just kind of was, and it's just like it's funky black Sabbath. And it's, yep. I don't know, yeah, I right. really like that one. I, I like the one you did with uh, Snowblind. What was the one that you did with Snowblind in that there? That was recent. That was um, with Rockwell. Somebody's yeah. watching me. Somebody's Somebody, watching me, right. And, and then you stick in, what was it, Jakey e. Lee solo from Bark at the Moon on that one as well? It's oh, like, that was from one that I did uh, that, um, before that. That was uh, the, the Miracles, Love Machine. Oh, Love Just a Little, right, yeah. right, right. Yeah, and that was- How the Andy hell Andy did you Andy manage Andy to think, gee, right. I think Jakey e. Lee solo from Bark at the Moon would work perfectly in this. I think that one was a, was a, a like a total miracle that that one worked as well as it did just because 
Okay, so it starts in the key of D minor. Right. But then toward the end, it does all this modal kind of stuff. And he's, mm -hmm. uh, he's playing part of the same scale, like the D minor scale, but just in like a modal. So he's starting and yeah. ending on a different note each time. And it really worked well with the, the one section of the Miracle Song where there's this, the strings, you got the orchestra yeah. playing. And I was just like shaking my head like, I can't believe this. It's just it's amazing that this works as well as it does. And I never thought I would be able to use that solo for anything just because if you're going to use that, you can't just use part of it. You have to use the whole thing. There are times where I'll, I'll just use a just a, a segment of a solo. So it's, sure. if it's a really long one. I'll just I'll use just, you know, eight bars, 16 bars, whatever it, it is. But that one, I just you just have to use the whole thing. So I, I just got lucky with that one. And it's it's funny because I actually talked to um, Billy Griffin, who was the, the singer on that miracle song. Oh, shoot. Okay. So <clears throat> I got into contact with him, which was kind of cool because that never happens. Sure. But he wanted to talk to me, you know, just to, to kind of tell me like, you know, that he really enjoyed it and he thought it was really cool. And he was happy that I was, you know, using that music and, and mm -hmm. bringing it to a new audience. And then he was, you know, such a nice guy, really cool to talk to. He gets to. it though. That, you know. Yeah. The, I, wish yeah. Don wish Don Henley uh would it would would get it the same way this guy got it because it's like dude you're yeah. that's the and that's the bottom line what you do your 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 tagline is you taking old music and making it new yeah. that's the tagline you use and you're introducing and there's some kids who don't know some of this uh, either genre of music and you're sure, mixing right. it up like this mommy you know I've heard that song before but I heard a different vocalist on it yeah you know if if, if you know if if they stumble upon your your uh, YouTube page or see it on another that's site. A really cool thing because yeah, they might yeah. be metalheads, but now they're listening to Steely Dan because I put Metallica with Steely Dan. And I had somebody comment on that. Like, Oh, I, you know, I'm going to start, I'm going to check out Steely Dan. I really like the song. And I was like, yes, that's, that's, that, I couldn't ask for anything more. You know, that, that one of your favorite cool. bands, right? Oh yeah. If I could only name one, that's it. Yeah. For sure. Steely Dan. Yeah, I knew that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, getting back to the Don Henley thing that you mentioned. Yes. I can remember just, I wanted to hear the, the song Dirty Laundry just because I oh, like it. It's love a really that cool song. song. Yep. And I couldn't find it anywhere just to straight out. Like, I, it's not on YouTube. I was looking on Apple Music. Like, it's like, you can't, you really? can't find it. Like, what the, oh. why? That's ridiculous. Like, I mean, you have, it's like, you have to buy a physical copy of it to be able to listen to it. That's just bizarre. Hmm. Be that way and, and so controlling of, of your music. That it's you can't just stream it somewhere. Find it, right, uh, right. Well, you, you got the notorious copyright blockers. Yeah, I'm in a I'm in a Led Zeppelin covers band. Everybody's gonna come in. Who always mentions that? But I I have to mention a couple of talking points because I'll put snippets of songs in uh, places like Trampled. When we do Trampled Underfoot, I'll I'll sing a snippet of Staying Alive by the Bee Gees or Donis or, or living for the city of, of, of Stevie wonder, just for the hell of it. When there's a place where I can extend, nice. uh, and the guys are, we're keeping the groove going, extending the set list so we can play longer and get paid more. And, <laughs> and, uh, but, the, but Zeppelin did that a lot. They would take other people's songs and, and, and put snippets of that stuff in there, not necessarily like in a mashup kind of way, but you know, we could take songs that I think, Oh, that would work in that song. I can, it's in the same key. Let's stick it in there, you know. Absolutely. But That's but um, they're, they're oh, I'm a huge Zep head, so we could talk forever about that. But they're notorious copyright blockers. Have you yeah. have you and you've have you ever tried a, a Zeppelin mashup and pff, take it down? Yeah, I did one, um, with Iron Maiden. Oh, long, cool. At least, at least five years ago, and that was blocked for a while. I didn't dispute it, but then one day it was unblocked. And then it, it, at the same time, like all these Led Zeppelin stems started appearing that I was never mm. able to find before, like isolated yeah. vocals or guitar tracks. So it's like somebody flipped a switch and like all of a sudden Led Zeppelin's OK <laughs> to, to have I, on YouTube. I, I don't know. It, and, and the person that I in that band that's still living that I think would be the most receptive to that is Robert Plant, because you look what he did in his solo career with the song Tall Cool One. He was sampling oh, himself. Yeah. He, that's right yeah the he was the, sampling himself song. Yeah. yeah bill can you yeah. talk a little bit about the reception that you get to your mashups whether it's from the artist side or just the public side and and kind of you know the feedback that you get sure um it's rare that i actually talk to an artist but there there have been several times where i find that 
somebody shared it on on their social media. So Geezer Butler a couple of times has, mm -hmm. has shared ones that I've done. Uh, Nile Rogers from Chic, he loved the one that I did with Iron Maiden, which I thought mm -hmm. was just incredible because I mean that that guy is, is phenomenal oh, as yeah. a musician, as a producer, like he's yeah. great. So for him to to call me a genius, I don't think I'm a genius, but yeah, for him to call me that was like that's high praise right there. That's really Absolutely. cool. Yeah. Uh, Zach Wild has sh shared one that I did with Black Label Society and the Temptations. Oh, um, that's right. Yeah, actually, just recently, you know, I I have to look into this a little bit more, but I did a um, it was Van Halen and Cool and the Gang. So, yeah, uh, that was great. Celebration, yes. celebration yeah, best and of best of both worlds. worlds. Yeah, world, yeah. right. And that one had been suggested to me several times over the years, which totally makes sense because the hook is basically the same thing that da, 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 it da, really da, is. Da, yeah. Da. It's, it's kind of, you know, close to copyright infringement. I would think is, I mean, they're that close, but something interesting about that is I did that one, I think in May and Sammy Hagar is on tour now yeah. with his band. Um, I, I think he, Joe Satriani, I know is, yep. is guitar i think maybe jason bonham bonham on the drum. jason mm -hmm. bonham yeah and, yes and then, yeah. Michael, uh, anthony michael anthony on bass, on bass. Mm -hmm. and people started commenting on that mashup that sammy hagar is now he's playing best of both worlds live and he's incorporating celebration into it and i don't know are you kidding me no if you yeah I... look on youtube and search, okay yeah uh just sammy I've... hagar with that's with best of both worlds most recent and you'll see a bunch of live performances huh, yeah okay but I, I don't know if he's always done that or if he saw that mashup and he started doing it i don't know and i, Hopefully and, we and get to... I can't even take credit for the idea because again it's been suggested a bunch of times sure. and i just kind of like okay i'll do this because it's you know it's, it's a really cool idea so why not see if i can develop it and you know oh so, he, yeah he is. Yeah. he's doing that live now and, 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 and it's it just and if fit. he took the yeah, I was gonna say if he took the idea from me, Bill, he owes you a, shot, a bottle of his tequila, Santos. Tequila. I would happily take a bottle of his tequila for sure. Listen, as a school teacher, there's certain times of the year you need it. <laughs> Absolutely. Speaking Absolutely. of which, I'm sorry if I can just interrupt just very yeah, very quick, sure. just to stand that theme just for a second, Bill, because yeah. I'll, I'll I'll tell you something. You know, even uh, you know I'm a lay musician myself, and I've seen Van Halen live, and obviously I've heard Celebration yeah. a million times in my life. But I never would have thought, speaking about it and talking about it, you're right. The progression the chords, they're, they're the same, right? But yeah. for the average person, they may not think that. So then you come along and you do the mashup and then it just, it brings people into, to your earlier point, a whole you know new realm context, brings them into contact with music that they might not have considered before. And right. then it just, again, doesn't sound forced because it just goes so well, so well together. So that's got to be rewarding for you. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I, I do like that aspect too. you know, bringing it together and, you know, just, for just my own musical taste. I mean, I've always liked both, both of those, you know, the, the rock stuff, whether it's, you know, classic rock or, you know, maybe met, you know, hard and heavy stuff, heavy metal and then yeah. soul music too. And I mean, I definitely, I, I love funk, you know, George Clinton. Oh, there you go. I love that, especially in college, love that stuff. And then got into a lot of other, you know, similar groups whether it's you know funk disco soul whatever it is and i i love that stuff the spinners love that that music sure you know so it was and they were always separate but then you know starting to combine them is it's just a really cool thing sure in a way you've desegregated that, that genre of those genres of music in yeah. a way when you think about it you know totally uh and and since one you know since black culture has influenced so much of that rock and roll repertoire it, it you know you're 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 in a way paying homage to the to the roots of of some of that music so that's that's a yeah. really cool thing i just wanted to add i saw van halen the uh, film live without a net back in, oh. in new haven connecticut back in oh yeah and they did a cover of um robert palmer's addicted to love which they oh. obviously for copyright reasons they couldn't because right before they hit the stage and do sammy hagar's there's only one way to rock they they had that they had that version of Robert Parr blaring over the speakers and you knew it was time for them to come on stage and do their thing. Oh, shh. And you and you know that Dude. I can relate because 
I was at the same show back in you were. I know. Oh yeah. <laughs> yep. New Haven Coliseum. Yep. Yep. Yeah. That's awesome. That's great. Oh God. You know, part, yeah. part of what I put in the in your the intro when I was writing the intro was, you know, it it literally is you giving us a new way to not only listen to music, but then when you put the videos together, it's a new way to, to watch the music as well, which again is just another extension of bringing different people into contact with different kinds of music. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that, I mean, that is a big part of it too, is the video editing. And that, that's always the last step. So all the audio is done first. And then once I, I have that, I export it and then import that into iMovie and then find just all the video clips that I'm going to want to use. And um, sometimes that's pretty simple. I'm able to find stuff where it's just one, you know, one live concert of this song and I could just use all the footage from that. And then, mm -hmm. you know, maybe a music video from the other song, whatever, whatever works. <clears throat> there's times where there's a lot more that I'll do. In fact, the one that I, that I did with, um, with Rockwell and Black Sabbath, I had some of the clips from, um, from Goodfellas, which we were talking about earlier. Oh um, yeah, uh, where uh, Henry Hill, where he's <laughs> driving and he's looking up at the helicopter. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. But he's yeah. watching me. Yes, 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 yes. And uh, that was that was clever. Yeah, I Scarface yeah. too. Scarface was the other one. That's another one of my favorite movies, where he's being watched as he's counting his money, and there's a, yeah. a clock and the the, the hole yeah. where the clock was supposed to be. So there's a camera watching him. I don't know. It's a whole like cocaine. You had a little <laughs> dust concept uh, moment there, Bill. That, look, but you know, it's, it's brilliant. It, it really, it's, it's, Thank it's you. an art form and, you know, hats off to you. Cause uh, you know, if there was an award for that kind of thing on YouTube, you should be getting it, man. Thank um, you. I, I did want to bring up though. You're welcome. Um, n n the, the evolution of, of mashups now is, is going into the AI territory in groups like there, I've ruined it. Are you familiar with this? Page? Oh, I know you. I, you have to be, and Certainly. they're just they're taking it a step further, and they're taking these stems with the AI technology. Like you know, you have Johnny Cash singing Barbie Girl, oh, yeah. and you have um, Kermit the Frog doing June Gin and Juice. You know, my mind on my money, <laughs> my money on my mind. It's I mean, it's hilarious, great. but yeah, it's a little so frightening. Funny. You yeah. know, what are your thoughts on the use of AI technology doing parodies like that? Is it is it so I think that's great. In fact, I forget his name. I'd have to look it up. The 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 guy who operates that channel. He reached out to me a while ago before he, you know, really blew up and is, is doing the stuff that he's doing now. Because mm -hmm. he was doing some mashup stuff at the time on it like his YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. He was running into copyright issues like I do, and he was asking what I do about them and that kind of thing. And then he just he took it in another direction. And I mean, the stuff that he does is brilliant. And I have no idea how he does it. <laughs> I, I would I would like to reach out and, you know, and talk to him and, and ask, you know, what what is he using to to create everything that he does? But I know that he does a lot. Like, you know, the backing tracks, I, I don't know if he plays all the instruments or if he uses computer software to to sequence different tracks together. But I think he writes that stuff himself just yeah. in a country country style whatever it is and then and then he just ha he has a concept of like you said johnny cash doing what song was it barbie girl aqua's song? barbie girl okay yeah i'm a barbie girl okay. in a barbie then, like, girl. I, I think that he's that is so much his, his thing and i don't want to go into his territory oh, sure you know what sure. i mean and I, what i try to do and and, and what i like I, I i try to keep it as authentic as possible Sure. So it's, you know, stuff that happened, <laughs> you know, it's like real vocals, real yeah. music. Sure. And, and combining those, it's, it's like for me that, I mean, that's just, that's my thing. And it's just the magic of, of taking two things that are recognizable that, you know, that, that instantly, you know, both songs and they shouldn't go together, but they do. So, yeah. So I don't know if I'll get into the AI stuff. I would like to use, use it sparingly you know if i wanted to have ozzy sing a part that was originally the vocal in the the instrumental if that makes it like so the original vocal sure. of a song like if i wanted to have ozzy singing rockwell's part for example or have him singing um i also did a black sabbath with wham have him singing yes. george wow. michael's 
part for like a, a phrase or something, at least something subtle, you know, just to, to kind of work that in would be just, just a, a different direction I could go in, I suppose. So that's cool. No, I, I get it. And, and, but, but the, the use of it sparingly, cause like, you know, well, I, I'll tell you that there I ruined a g g guy or if it's a gal, I, I know it's a guy. Yeah, um, yeah. They, I mean, I'm like, Oh boy, I'm never going to hear Kermit the frog <laughs> rainbow connection. It's, it's Same. genius though, because he takes the yes. whole rainbow connection and, and gets those, gets those words to fit the, 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 I guess there's AI software that has the note stems on there and they just take yeah. the words and place them in there. So I'd be curious, Jay, we got to have that guy on. Yeah. Sidebar, sidebar. Bill, if you have got contact information too, we'd love to have, we, yeah, we'd love to have him on because. Yeah. Let me look into it. Please, please appreciate yeah. that. No, because that I'm curious about that. And I was really curious to know your, your thoughts on it, but he had reached out to you initially. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, naturally, because you've been doing it for a while and, 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 and have such a, a skill at it. So, yep. wow. So, um, Jay, may I move on to his teaching? Absolutely. Facet, please. <laughs> I'm just, I've been chomping at the bit. So I used to be a music educator as well, Bill. And, and you, you know, I left right before the pandemic hit due to some medical issues. Um, that's a story for another, that's a chapter in a book. Um, the building I was in had so much black mold. I literally was getting polyps on my vocal folds and I sing and I, I just couldn't hack, hack that anymore. I was like, yeah, I got to get out of here. But, wow. um, well, yeah. Hey, we're all good now. But, uh, good. right before the pandemic hit, how, you know, with your music technological skills that you already have, uh, in working technology, uh, during the pandemic, even though it, there's no real ideal way of teaching any subject let alone music okay boys and girls rhythm with the lag time on a zoom screen i imagine you had a slightly easier time than perhaps some teachers i think so you know it was so it was weird i mean of course nobody knew that was coming it was like totally nope. like what what is this whole pandemic thing and that it so it was um you know in 2020 obviously and and a few months before that in october of 2019 Mm -hmm. is when I started at my school at, at Stowe Rocks, where I, I teach now at the yes. primary center in the upper elementary. Mm -hmm. And I had been in a charter school for five years before that. Oh, wow. So I was still very new in Stowe Rocks. And as a specials teacher, because yes. we, we have music, art, gym, steam, and library. Mm -hmm. But as a specials teacher, you have all the kids. So I had all yep. the kids in the upper elementary, all the kids in the mm -hmm. primary. So it was like mm -hmm. so much new. Like I didn't, I didn't know those kids. It was, and it takes forever to kind of build that rapport. Sure. And you can imagine there were <clears throat> just a lot of behavior issues, especially <sighs> at the beginning. You know, once, once I, I really got to know the kids and, and we had that rapport, it became a lot easier. But at that mm. time, and then in March, when that hit, at first it was like such a relief because I'm like, oh, I just, I, it, it was so hard to get to, to go there every day. And at that, so the, for the end of that school year, we just made a few assignments online for the kids to do just mm -hmm. using Google classroom. And um, sure. there wasn't much to it at that point, because I mean, yeah. even the admin was trying to figure out like, I'm sure, you know, how are we going to continue educating these kids? You know, they're all at home. A lot of them didn't have technology. No. And you know, we're working to get technology to those kids to get, sure. to get give them internet access, to give them Chromebooks so that they could continue yeah. to, to learn, you know. And, and of course, at the main focus at that time was just going to be reading and math and just to make sure that they really keep up on that stuff. So yeah. for the rest of that school year, specials were, were pretty much put on the back burner. And <laughs> I remember we were doing stuff to help the other classroom teachers just to get in contact with these kids, sure. with the parents and get them technology and all that stuff. Yeah. But the following school year, so the 2021 school year, we, we were virtual the entire year. Specials teachers never, we didn't have any kids in the classroom. So it was mm -hmm. 100% on Zoom. And then you, you're putting assignments in Google Classroom. So, mm -hmm. you know, it, it was tough because you can't, I mean, typically in a, as a general music teacher, just the foundation of music, mm -hmm. doing everything to a steady beat, you know, movement to music, all those things yeah. that you, you couldn't do a steady beat on zoom just because of the, the lag time. Yeah. So you really had to, I mean, what I did is I just, I had all the kids muted and I had, you say, you're going to sing along with me, but mm -hmm. 
but I couldn't unmute them because then I would be hearing them a second after I'm singing whatever I was singing. Okay. And so it would have been out of sync. So, I mean, they were still singing with me, but I just wasn't able to hear them, you know? So I was doing some singing, some instrument, like I had them doing like make your own percussion instrument or find mm -hmm. a percussion instrument. Uh, I did a lot with rhythm, just okay. you know, having them read rhythms. And I, I had flashcards and we were going through and saying them. Uh, I would do some games. We did a, I have a, it's a memory like matching game that mm -hmm. has pictures of instruments. And then you have to match that with the, the name for the instrument. Mm -hmm. And we would play that a lot. Um, and then just as written assignments, like they would have to watch a video and, and write something. I mean, that was from some of the older kids because I, I have kindergarten yeah. through sixth grade. Yeah. So it would depend on, on the grade level what, what I would have them do. Yeah. But it was, you know, it was weird because there was no classroom management. So there was the, the stress wasn't there. But at the same time, you didn't get that that rewarding feeling the that you feedback, get at the end of the day yeah. when you have the kids it, in person. So it, yeah. was, it, was, it was I wouldn't want to do it again. Yeah. I would not want to do that again. I would take you know, take having you, them in a classroom any sure. day. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what curriculum? I mean, I'm just curious. Do, is there a textbook series that you use in the county that you're in or the district that you're I, in? You know, I use Game Plan, which I love. I it. It's uh, so it's it's a K through five curriculum. Okay. And it's really cool because it's it it presents like they're supposed to be about 60 minute lessons mm -hmm. and it's a different lesson. So if it's kindergarten, they start with September week one and then here's all these ideas and it's it's it has like a farm theme so they're oh, like cool. you know singing about farm animals that kind of stuff okay. and then it'll progress just through the entire year meeting the national standards and everything they're supposed to learn about beat mm -hmm. <clears throat> and about matching pitch moving yep. the music any of that stuff yeah. and then it will just continue with each grade level and i i stuck with that pretty closely when I and I used it in the charter school because that's what was there. And I, mm -hmm. I had experience. I had five years there. And so I, I knew the curriculum pretty well. And, you know, I've adapted and I've, I've added some things and thrown out some things. Sure. It sure. Just, it, it just for what is what whatever works with the kids best. And I do, it's, especially with the older kids, I, I have them do as much instrument playing as possible. So we'll sure. do recorders, we'll do bucket drums, we'll do ukuleles, boom mm -hmm. whackers, mm -hmm. you know, all, all the hands-on stuff. Yep. Because they, I mean, anything that's engaging. Yeah. Because a lot, a lot of these kids, I mean, they'll, they'll, if you don't have really good classroom management skills, mm -hmm. you're mm -hmm. in trouble. <laughs> oh yeah. I do, I do a reward system and I actually mm -hmm. do, I have a, a, a donors choose account, you know, and, and I'll do donors choose projects. Uh, and but like one that I have on currently is just for incentives for like prizes for the kids for good behavior. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'll do like a, a star chart. So you earn a star and I, I just do it on a, like a Google sheet. So they earn a star by their name for good behavior. And then every five stars, they get to come up and pick a prize. And that has worked so well because, uh, you know, kids will just stop me in the hall. Like, how many stars do I have? And I'm like, dude, you're one of. 500 kids how do i get off the top of my head no but i'm like i don't know you know we'll check you know as soon as you come to class we'll see how many you have but that it's just that's so motivating for them and it's it's yeah. really helped to to you know keep them under control you know and manage god, the class and, god bless you uh for doing i i did it i know it it's like it, it's like talking to a military veteran yeah. <laughs> when you talk about the war stories yeah and what, and there are plenty of what, what grade level did you teach? I did kindergarten kindergarten through fifth uh, when I was in Anne Arundel County, Maryland. And then when I moved up here, uh, I did kindergarten through six in one particular school district. I subbed in. You know how hard it is to get a, a, a Pennsylvania teaching job in, in a yeah. non-charter school. Right. So, yeah, um, for sure. You know, and, uh, you know, once you get your 10 years in there, Bill, you know, you got a nice, it's so hard to get a Pennsylvania teaching job, but once you get your p pension vested after, what is it, 10 years still? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 I mean, it's incredibly rewarding if you can, if you can, you know, specials teachers that see all the grades, there's a blessing and a curse to it mm -hmm. because you do get to know the students and you do build a repertoire because grade teachers only see them once a year. You see them every year, whether you want to or not. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and that is, that <laughs> but, the kid. 
if he's a pain in kindergarten, I'm like, oh, I got to see this. Some of them actually do progress, though. Some of them actually develop. You've seen that, too, I'm sure. But yeah, boy, we could a talk lot of progress and they, they, they end up doing really well. And yeah, but it's it, and the other thing is I each kid I just see once a week for 45 minutes. You're 45 minutes special. OK, if they have one if one kid who's a problem, they see the same kid all day, every day. Yeah, that would be tough. I'd rather do it the way that, that we do it and you know, see all the kids. But one and done small doses. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. I, I totally get it, man. Well, listen, you know, working for Fine Wine and Spirits, if you need anything, Bill, l- let me know. <laughs> anything will, hard to get? I will hit you up for sure. <laughs> believe me, we can talk. But, yeah. um, well, it, 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 I, I tell you, this has been fantastic to talk to you and, and get to know a little bit about you. And, you know, you got a wife and two kids yourself. Mm-hmm. So, you know, are, are they learning any instruments or anything from, from their dad? Uh, Actually, they're both learning piano. I have them uh, taking piano lessons. I mean, okay. I'm I'm a, like I said a, a guitarist. That's what I know the By best. Trait, yeah. I have like functional piano stuff that I would play, you know, to accompany the kids singing that kind of stuff, but yeah. I want them studying from somebody who really knows. So, it's actually at at Guitar Center. They have a couple of different oh, cool. piano instructors there that both of my kids like my son Owen has been taken for maybe 3 years. Cool. And my daughter Vivian um she's she's eight you know she just started a couple weeks ago and she loves it she could not wait she kind of had she was a little like under the weather yesterday and she was so upset like she still wanted to go in so i'm like yeah you know what we'll still take you (laughs) even though you're a little sick well that's great that that's off into your arm (laughs) wear a mask while you're with the instructor yeah i get oh that's well that's 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 precious to hear to hear that you know yeah and and, uh, how did how so I'm dying to know, do, do any of your students know about your mashups or the parents of the school know about um, that yeah, side? Yeah, some of them. And th- th- I mean, they're more fascinated just by the fact that I, I have a YouTube channel. That's a thing. Oh, the the okay. mashup content uh, or concept, they really, <laughs> yeah. Because they, I mean, they don't know the songs that I use to begin with. It's, you know, right. I, some of the, that stuff I introduce in the classroom Mm-hmm. sparingly but you know, right. they'll hear some of it but the, yeah the con- i think it, if i taught high school or, or college you know oh they, they would totally get that and they might really be into it in fact i had a um a a friend of mine who we we were both at the um in the music ed department together um, yeah. you know when i was there for music ed i was music technology first and then i was music ed later but okay. uh, she she invited me because she is a, a marching band director and mm-hmm. she also teaches a music tech class. And at at her high school, she did a, a unit on mashups and she, you know, she knows my stuff. Ooh. She actually asked me to come in and talk to to her class and just to like play some of them for wow. the, for those kids. I mean, she, she told me before and she's like, these kids are so excited for you to come. And, um, you know, because they really like what you do. And cool. and that was just awesome just because i don't have that um in my normal teaching job this if they just don't get it you know and it's it was I mean, the kid they were so respectful and just listening and just like kind of taking it all in so that was a really cool experience you actually you know, got to get the reward own, reap your rewards with the younger kids that you know that's so cool well well deserved well deserved too thank you did that give you any desire to want to teach older grades at all i mean because that can a little bit yeah, a little bit. We don't um, want we don't want your school that still rocks to lose you, but right. sure, you know. I mean, a part of it, yeah. It, it, I, I guess the bigger part of it is that I'm so comfortable with general music, sure, because I have that experience and I really yeah. know what what it and it just it seems like such a daunting task to do something that's so different from what I'm from what I'm doing currently. And also, I mean, I don't know where I would get a job that's just music tech. I mean, I would probably be a, a band director and that kind of, and I, I don't have sure. that experience. And the so. weekends will not be yours. Right. Yeah. Because you do, you do the, I have friends who now I have a friend who teaches just nothing but music tech classes in Mead high school. Well, he's moved to Arundel high school now, but he did teach just music tech classes, did a little bit of band. He's a percussionist. Okay. Uh, Tom Nixon, Tom, if you're out there. Uh, multi-instrumentalist just and and knows how to rock the iMovie like you do but he doesn't do mashups we used to do the, what i like to call the brady bunch 
videos where you know one person would record guitars one person would do vocals and, and all that stuff so we would do the brady bunch pandemic video b- band covers songs oh, which cool. we did dirty laundry actually oh, one of the you, songs uh... we did yes we did uh it's out there floating out in the in in the the facebook averse but um yeah so, but i but i get it it's it, and he's really good at, at doing the iMovie. movie uh very solid software very reliable uh you know i see why you use it but uh, yes yeah and then and i could use the, something that's more ad, uh, advanced that i'd have to pay for and i was oh, like I, why I, yeah I, I i you know it's more about the music anyway at yeah. least for me um mm-hmm. but it, it's iMovie does everything that i really need it to so i just kind of i just stuck with that all these years well, Bill, I, I can't thank you enough for coming on here. I, I, this has been it, before Jay and I joined forces. I have uh, taught, I've ta- chatted with you on Facebook and commented on your videos. Anytime you come out with a new video, I always share it religiously because awesome. you know thank what you. you do is is a gift to 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 the, the world, uh, and and brings thank joy. You. Uh, I, you know I that's so. I so. oh you no know, no no you you you're doing it you're doing it man. So, uh, Jay, do you have any final questions or thoughts? Or I, I really just wanted to kind of piggyback on what Kurt just said. And, you know, Bill, thank you for your time today. We appreciate that. Keep doing what you're doing. You know, I um, applaud you for, you know, your teaching, taking care of kids. You know, the education is very important. But That's then bringing a whole new, you know, generation into different types of music that also needs to be applauded too. And, you know, you may be doing it in a non-conventional way with the mashups, but it works and it's, it's rewarding. So again, I want to thank you for that as well. Absolutely. And thank you guys. I appreciate you having me on today. This has been fun. Uh, th- hey, listen, uh, uh, you know, at some point you're not that far. I mean, you are on the other side of the of the tunnel there, but uh, you know, uh, I've been dying to get out in, in Pittsburgh. I haven't been out there in a long time. Hey, where are you? Where, where are you? Uh, I am in Conshohocken on the other side near Philly, actually. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Conch, Conchi, as the natives call it up here in, in Montgomery County. Yeah. So I'm about okay. 13 minutes, 13 minutes, 13 miles away from downtown Philadelphia. Not too far. Okay. King of Prussia is not too far from me. Okay. Okay. The land of the mall. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. What about you, yeah. Jay? Where are you from? I'm I'm in Connecticut. Yeah. So oh, I, Connecticut. I, okay. I'm based out of Trumbull, Connecticut. Yep. Cool. So, uh, you know, eventually one day, you know, we can hook up. Yeah. Sounds good. Be great. Go and do you teach? What one last thing I did want to ask: Do you teach chorus? Do you do chorus with the with the group with the kids? Or? I don't. I mean, we do we do performances for like for Christmas and for Black History Month. Sure. But we we have a um we have another teacher who she's in the high school and in the upper elementary, and she okay. does chorus and she does band in the upper elementary. She so covers a, a all thing. that. Wow. Yeah. So that's a separate okay. thing from what I do. Um. Yeah, but she travels like every day. She starts she's in like high general. school and then she's in in the upper elementary in the afternoon. <sighs> That'll be tough. Yeah. You don't have to tell me. I get it. Wow. Yeah. Itinerant teaching can be. Well, the other thing is you can. There's a particular administrator that <laughs> you don't get along with. You don't see him as often, especially that, for observation. For observations. And so, oh, Bill, we could we could talk endlessly about that stuff. I know. Yes. I don't. I, I sure. miss some of it. And some of it I don't miss at, at all. At all. Yeah. But, um, oh, I get but that. thanks again uh have a great rest of your summer when do you go back to school we um so including this week i have three more weeks so okay. whatever that week of august is we have we have uh we we start with a cleric <clears throat> with a clerical day which is nice so we're just you know getting our rooms ready and then we have Good. three professional development days Ugh. and then and then that I mean, friday is one, one more clerical day yeah and then it start the following monday uh all those meetings that could be wrapped up in an email. Do you have to watch the Bloodborne Pathogens videos again? Oh, and all, yeah. oh Jesus, Bill. All those trainings. Yeah, every <laughs> year we've got to do them. And the, the PSSA training every year is exactly the same thing. Painful. <laughs> <laughs> right. The, everything shuts down like the pandemic for those damn state assessment tests. Oh. Yeah. Oh. oh. And it. Oh. Who, who can? If it can? Most of all, the kids. Right. The and only the good teachers. thing is they're in April, so it's like I feel like we're in the home stretch at that point. Right, right. Summer's on the way. Just yeah. get through it. We'll get there. All right. Well, g- listen, thanks for coming on. And, hey, enjoy any vacation time you're going to take with your family. 
have safe travels if you go anywhere and have a good rest of your summer and have a great school year. And I'll check in with you from time. We'll check in with you from time to time, see how things are going. And uh, great. thanks again, Bill. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much. Me on. Folks, if you like what you heard today, please hit the like and subscribe button. We will have a bunch of links for Bill's uh, uh, YouTube page. Not only that, but his Patreon page. Cause again, he doesn't get paid for the mashups that he makes folks. So he's got a, a merch available on Patreon as well. And there's in the YouTube uh, page, his YouTube page, places you can buy t-shirts and all kinds of stuff to support this man and his, and his art that he does. And it is an art form. So thanks again, folks. We'll talk to you next time and uh, look forward to our next guest. Take care. And Jay, our closing line, sir, if you will. Thank you all again very much. We're going to see you very soon. And always remember, when the universe comes knocking, you have to answer that door. Peace.